it's three o'clock in the afternoon. No joke. I mean, the camera actually doesn't show how red the sky is, but there's lights on. It just, it feels like Armageddon. This is exactly what happened during the Paradise Fires. The smoke from hours and hours away came rolling in. We've got the Creek Fire. We've got the kind of remnants of the fires south and to the east and to the now to the north. We got the Willits Fire. And I'm teaching about sustainability. <laughs> Tomorrow night, I start the Sonoma State University Executive MBA program about sustainability. And it's just like, I'm just like speechless in terms of the amount of devastation that we've had. Who, who could possibly think that any of this is normal, that, that somehow that there's just nothing to do with the fact that people and humans for the years that we've been living on this planet have not contributed to climate change. Um, I just don't know. I, I really want to know what the thought pattern is. But here's the crazy part. In the midst of all of it, we just finished this awesome paper project, or it's getting finished almost going to get done. There's that one piece left. And I am already thinking ahead to next summer. Okay, because I have vehicles or homes with wheels on them. For example, this is one of them, our new camper, camp over, camp over camper. Oh, I already saw the window open. That's not so great. Oops. Oy vey. And we also have a 33 foot tiny home, which we're working on getting um, going as an Airbnb. Check it out. This is three o'clock in the afternoon. You can see a little bit of bright light on that way right there. But if you look this way, I mean, the, the, I don't know, the camera is not picking up how dang orange it is, but this is Ukiah. It's just nuts. So, home on wheels, you know, next summer. I just can't deal. I, it's hard. This is, um, it's hard for lots of people. Now there's power shutdowns because the winds. Before it was excessive heat, but no wind. Now the winds are picking up. They're going to shut down power for a certain amount of hours so that the transmission lines won't get blown off and create a fire, which is pretty much what the last three years have been about here in Northern California. So, um, and you know, my other friends in Colorado, they're dealing with massive fires um, on top of massive heat. And then they're about to have crazy ass temperatures where it's gonna snow. <laughs> so climate change, you think? Like record breaking, record breaking. We keep hearing the word record breaking that's an indication that something is changing and it's changing and has changed within my lifetime. So the impacts that we all make on our planet impact all of us. I mean, just look at that. Oh, variation of the sky. So what kind of car do you drive? What kind of food do you eat? Um, these are all important things to look at as we take the tiny steps to sustainability. And it's about sustainability for future generations. I mean, the reality is, you know, the big question is how long do we want to live here as human population? Um, and that's pretty much the biggest one. How long do we want to live here? Or the other big one is what do we want to leave? What kind of resources do we want to leave for our future generations? Clean water, trees, um, clean food, clean air, you name it. And a lot of that comes down to the choices we make, but also the policies and legislation that gets passed um, and the support for specific environmental activities. And right now our current leadership has proven to be quite opposite of supporting the environment 
given that there's been a gutting of the EPA. And if you don't, you know, believe in the opinions that I share, I respect that. Um, please don't put out any hating comments um, because I'll delete them because <laughs> if they've got profanity or whatever, I'm good with debate, okay? I was raised by my dad who's a big devil's advocate, okay? I am all about debate. And in fact, I think we need to have more debate, not about personal character, about what the heck are we going to do? What are we going to do to solve things versus they suck, you suck, back and forth, everybody sucks, okay? That gives us nowhere. I'm really tired of the political system. It never was like this growing up. I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's all these different viewpoints out there on everything that's going on, everything from COVID to mask wearing to no mask wearing to diversity to the police to you name it. Um, but guess who gets harmed if we don't have intelligent conversations about this stuff? Our future, our personal future, yes, but our future of our kids, our future, our legacy, everything that, you know, I'm standing here on this one little spot on the earth of this round big globe. And I'm wondering, what are we gonna do to protect it? What are we gonna do to make sure that other generations can walk the same path and that the skies don't look like this all the time, right? I mean, this is apocalyptic, straight up apocalyptic. I, there's a mountain over there. You'd never know it. So blessings to everyone. May you stay safe, breathe well, put on your mask for more reasons. If you're especially in Northern California, I'm sorry, but the index is high. If you were in a mask wearer before, you might want to put one on now just so you save your lung capacity. So, all right, everyone, just keep the prayers coming in for California. Pretty much the West Coast, man. Excessive heat warning was like all over the West Coast and there was fires everywhere. There's even a fire right now in the Seattle area. Um, here's the deal, I get it. Fires have always happened. In fact, fires clear out forests and fires, you know, but the way we've been practicing the lack of control burns, I will even say some of the environmentalists don't want to get, you know, cuts that have been done within the forest pulled out, you know, I'm willing to be wrong. I'm willing to like step up and say, oh, okay, do we need to do something differently that I didn't know about? Then let's do it. And, and we need to talk through it, not just be bashing at each other. And with social media, OMG, it is so easy to bash. <laughs> it just is like, this is why I'm creating the tiny home town hall to have dialogue. I mean, that's of course in the focused area of affordable housing, which is far more sustainable, right? Smaller homes that you can live in, obviously that's tiny, but that's not so tiny compared to the tiny, tiny homes. Um, they all play a role, everything we do, whether it's the food we eat, the houses we live in, the cars we drive or not drive. Um, I, I just have to bring in my friend, Deb Hubsmith. She ran Safe Routes to Schools, a nonprofit, four years. In fact, the, the green bike lanes that you see turning that you on the ground all over the country, we can thank her and a number of other people for that work that happened um, to, to help us all guide us into safer routes to school, safer routes to work, you name it. And she passed away. You know, she's not seen all these fires. She didn't, I think she only dealt with the one that burned Harbin. Yeah, but not all the ones since. And I know my friend Deb, who was an avid biker. She didn't own a car. She took public transportation. She flew a lot because of the work she did. You know, every time she'd fly to the Washington DC, she'd be talking policy about making routes to school safer so that everyone didn't have to drive their kids to school. So even though she personally used a lot of energy by being in a plane, the work that she did reduced tons of greenhouse gases. So that was her legacy. My legacy is biofuels from the past, LED lighting. I have converted hundreds, if not thousands of buildings to LED lights versus the fluorescent ones or incandescent that were before them. So we call it negawatts. They get the same amount of light, but with less wattage. There's just wattage that you didn't have to use to light the space. And now it's tiny homes. 
So that's my focus uh, is all about affordable housing. Obviously you're gonna use LED lights. I wish we could use more biofuels in the car, but that's a whole nother story when governments take subsidies away from products like biofuels and they become more expensive than diesel. It's, it's an industry that can't keep up. And now it's actually being brought, about 5% is brought into all fuels or are going to be. There's Mr. Honey. Hi, Mrs. Honey. Hi there. So we're gonna go shopping now and I just wanted to pop on and show you this crazy, yeah, crazy sky. sky reality. We're gonna do one emergency thing at least. What? You fill up the gas tank. That's Good true. to start your emergency with a full gas tank. Right. One and where does that gas come from? Oh my gosh, that's a whole nother story. OPEC. Oh, <laughs> ah, OPEC wars. Bye. Okay, bye.